change that happens has to be something that makes a known difference. Um, otherwise, it's secret history. And you can have a great secret history story, but it's to me, it's something different from alternate history. Uh, and what I mean there is, if the change happened and you follow it through, but history as we know it isn't impacted by it, it's secret history. Um, and that doesn't necessarily mean personal. You can have very personal alternate histories. One of my, two of my favorite examples of personal alternate histories are the movie It's a Wonderful Life and the movie Sliding Doors. Both of them explore alternate history, and actually Wonderful Life does it better because it does show the major ramifications if George Bailey had, had never existed. Um, and then the third part is, it needs to explore how this change changed the world. An alternate history that ends with the change, to me, is not really an alternate history. You need to follow up on that change, see what happens. Uh, and the, the story itself can be set at the point of the branch and a little bit beyond, or it could be set 200 years beyond the branch, you know, and let you know what the branch is. And it doesn't have to be explicit about the branch, but you should be able to figure out what it is. So that's my definition of alternate history, and it does vary. We'll take questions later. Um, I'd really like people up here. Okay. Um, probably not. Uh, again, it would depend on the circumstances. Although one of the one of the things I would have really been wanting to do for several years is I want to do an anthology where I invite a whole bunch of authors of fa fantasy or science fiction who have long-running series to write an alternate history set in their world. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the Star Wars new movies, it's, would you consider that an alternate history? <laughs> well, you know, they are, you know, they, they haven't gone back and changed anything. I mean, you, know, you can kind of make a case that they tweaked it and, uh, with the, the prequels. But for instance, you know, you know, I would love, for instance, to see, you know, just to pull around, George R. R. Martin. If if Ned had not been, does that have ever has this ever gotten through at least the first book? <laughs> uh, you, you, you know, write a story set in that world in which something from the first book happened very differently. <laughs> yeah. Please. <laughs> when, when, I, when I was writing the Timeline 191 books, which began in the 1880s and worked up through World War II, I finally got to 1942 in that series, and my wife said, you ought to have aliens invade right now just to watch your editor's head explode. <laughs> The thought occurred to a lot of people other than Laura. <laughs> Steve, I want to challenge you just a little bit on one thing you said, although I, I'm just being ornery. <laughs> uh, you, you said, uh, and I love these definitions uh, of alternate history. I think they're very, very cogent and easy to understand. But when you say has to change history, um, do you mean history as dominant culture would define it, like the things that we, the wars that happen, the, 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 the big corporate events, uh, the, the, uh, the scientific uh, um, discoveries, things like that, or, or, or would you acknowledge that history can also be social change? Oh, definitely social change. I'm editing an anthology about peaceful oh, change. Okay. <laughs> well, the idea of alternate peace is where it's not war, it's not violence. Um, so if, it, if it's uh, social change, and um, uh, might we include some um, books more in the cousin territory into alternate history, if, if the social changes were like gender roles, for instance, um, and those gender roles are perceived by the reader and through the point of view character as personal uh, everyday experience of, of, um, of sexism or you know these kinds of things uh, or, or would it have to have large ramifications like oh gosh if women are going to have those roles then then we'll have these huge things that have to happen or or can it be more individual in particular in my opinion, it can be very individual in particular. Um, I would like to see an exploration of some of the larger ramifications, but I'm, I'm very happy looking at something like what you're describing as and considering an alternate history. Of course, 
that's not a blanket statement with anything. Of course, it depends on how you do present it and how you write it and, and, right. and everything. You, you know, right. all right, many years ago, because she's 30 years dead now, Anna Russell spoofed Grand Opera. <laughs> <laughs> Anna Russell famously said, in Grand Opera, you can do anything as long as you sing it. <laughs> and that applies pretty much to any kind of artistic endeavor, very much including alternate history. You can do anything as long as you do it well enough, as long as you sing it, as long as you convince the reader and make the reader follow along and want to know what happens next, you can do whatever you jolly well please if you do it well. Okay.